Alex, you want to do the intro real quick? Uh, sure. It's just this is Jelly Side Down. This, it's just this is Jelly Side Down, right? You yeah, you can do whatever. Or oh, I can too. Okay. What? Just okay. you know. Okay. Make well, people feel at ease. Sure. All right. I didn't know if we needed consistency or not. My bad. No, no, no. Oh. There's no consistency. Gotcha. Yes. Uh, you're listening to Jelly Side Down. Are they? You sounded <laughs> unsure. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I know. I don't know why I said that. Why was there a question mark? I don't know, thing? okay? I'm nervous. I'm with all my friends. Well, maybe this is like a spooky Twilight Zone podcast oh, episode. No. You may or may not be listening to, tw- to Jelly Side Down right now. All right, I'll, I'll Look behind it. you. <clears throat> I'll do a good one. And I'm going to do another intro because I really messed that up. <laughs> I'm going yeah, with the first one. That one. I did. I just didn't. There was no passion. All right. <clears throat> Do people usually introduce themselves in the intro or no? You can. Okay, well I figured I was just gonna say like, this is Jelly Side Down, I'm Alex, or something like that. Is that okay, are we allowed to do that? You can do whatever you want. Oh wow. It's, We're your, the pod- it's your podcast. All right, All right so gonna... is he gonna do your intro again? Yeah, one more time. Okay. <clears throat> this is Jelly Side Down. <laughs> Shut up! Maybe, maybe. I think it's just because it's so short. I'm, I'm so, well, like, okay, someone else give me some line. I, mean, I expected more, but it just cut. I know, I'm <laughs> sorry. I, I always feel like there's gonna be something else, but I don't know what else to say. Like, it just, okay, give me, what's my line? Line? <laughs> Not so easy, is it? This, this bread, is Jelly Stout. Bread goes on, bread goes in toaster, toast, or jam goes on toast, but jelly's always down. Jelly side down. So bread goes in. To- Wait, what? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna try that one. I'm gonna try that one. Bread goes in toaster. Jam goes on bread. Bad things always happen when he's around. Jelly side down. That's uh, okay, much. now this though. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try Frodo's first. We're gonna, right. we're gonna go with that one. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Bread goes in toaster. Jam goes on toast. It's always jelly side down. I don't know why there's a question! Bad things always happen when he's around. I'm not adding that. All right, John, you do yours. Fred, I just used one of my other ones. No, no, I'm going to do mine. Let me do mine. Yeah, just do shots. Okay, all right. Okay, here we go. Red goes in toaster. Jam goes on bread. Bad things always happen when he's around. This is Jelly Side Down. one more time in a different voice? Oh no. Last one, I swear. Okay. Red goes in toaster. Jam goes on bread. You're listening to Jelly Side Down. It's all in your head. So we've got uh, a new website. Facebook slash uh, Mr. Frodokin. uh, Which uh, mirrors our YouTube site. uh, YouTube slash Mr. Frodokin. Nice. So, we have that. I, I believe we have uh, 14 people who uh, like the page already. Wow. So, which which is kind of sad because that's uh, four less than the people who liked Jazz Mummy. Also, you guys, uh, our listeners or viewers, can uh, email us at uh, downthejellyside at gmail.com uh, with uh, maybe uh, some... I don't know, suggestions for Sean, for maybe music that he's maybe not heard of, uh, questions. Maybe you oh, want to send really, us some uh, relevant... I would really, uh, I'd really like that. That, that would be, that'd be great. Yeah, that's why I suggested. Uh, or maybe maybe some elephant news that you've stumbled across, or mummy news, or what other crap we do on this thing. Um, but yeah, or, or you just want to tell us how bad our podcast sucks. Uh, that's all fine. You guys want to do some news? Sure. Yeah. News, news is always fun. All right. Um, so uh, this is from, oh, God, the <laughs> the Raw Story at rawstory.com. Uh, the first test tube hamburger will come out this year. No. They, yeah. they Like, they're actually producing red meat, like, without an animal now? Yeah, made from cow's stem cells uh, will be produced this fall. Um uh, the Dutch are actually making it. The Ugh. Dutch. The Dutch. <laughs> Wait, so 
what what's really important here though is they okay so they got some cow uh, stem cells are they going to be able to make it like self replicating so they can keep harvesting it or are they just going to have to keep harvesting cow stem cells because that just seems like a really obtuse middleman to make a burger. Well, I'm guessing they're not going to just keep using different stem cells. I'm sure they have a way to clone it. And uh, possibly, I I don't even know what to say about that. That's just disturbing. You know, I'm curious about the taste. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I am too, obviously. But like, I'm curious about the why? garnish. What will they put on it? Why? What sort of special sauce? Why would they make it? Marrow, bone marrow. Ketchup. Two whole beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese. It's oh. a Big Mac. It's just weird because, like, on the one hand, I guess maybe they could help with like, like hunger issues in the world if they're able to grow food like that. But I wonder how safe it's going to be to eat in the early stages. It's a dangerous game. It those, is those hunger games. It's they're true. Playing. Well, kids are I see. Each other I'm assuming bones. the ultimate goal is you know making meat that was never at one point an animal. Mm -hmm. So vegetarians can eat meat? Question mark. No, it's more to um, ease the burden of farms and um, you know, mostly yeah. farms and the dairy industry. So it's like it's right. like getting more food out there to different different people. I guess is what they're doing. Yeah, and I mean, like cows is like like raising cows is pretty hard on the environment. Like uh, yeah. Just like, I mean, it takes a lot out of the earth to grow that much food for them, and then it creates a lot of methane. Yep, tons of methane. Well, like, are, are, we, are we slowly moving towards a world where uh, slaughterhouses are going to be a thing of the past? Is, is that their ultimate goal? Like, no more... Yeah, I, I wonder what will they do with the cows? Yeah, I was going to say... All the <laughs> well, they, they can't release them into the wild. No, set them free. <laughs> set them Run free. free to Antarctica with all of you. And, and then just like there was horrible accidents every day on the freeways for no. years. Because if they go to Antarctica, they're going to mate with the polar bears and then we're going to have polar cows. Oh, oh that'd be amazing. Cow bears. Cowler bears? Ooh, oh, cowler, cowler bears. No, cowler okay. Bears That's the one. Cowler bears. Size of a polar bear. Oh, half cow, half bear, stronger than both. Cowler bears mooing here and there and everywhere. Gross. That doesn't need to be the song that we use. Get out they of here. They are the color <laughs> bears. Um, yeah. Actually, like, I've heard that uh, cows destroy their grazing land so bad in the Midwest that farmers are actually switching to, um, to bison. Because they're actually... Uh, Less stupid. Easy, easier on the earth and they don't, um, they don't affect <laughs> the environment as much as cows do. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, it's, it's European cows versus Native American, you know, buffalo. Just we didn't respect, kill all of them. I they respect the earth. Yeah, actually, we did. Yeah. By the way, for any of the uh, any of the quote unquote listeners out there, if anyone wants to send in a picture of a cowler bear, I would really, really like to see that. If any, if there's any artists out there, or if you've spotted one in the wild. Either a, either a picture or a, an artist's rendition of a cowler bear. Ooh, I want to be... see one of it protecting its eggs. I really want to see that. Mm. <laughs> or big, big egg sack hanging from the ceiling. Why, it's protecting why, would, why would two mammals have eggs? Uh, a platypus. Boom. Yeah. yeah Game's but, etched. Yeah, but they, they combined this a beaver and a duck for that. So that one works. Uh, yeah, you're right. It so, does work. Yeah. You know, collar bears have powers we just don't understand. I suppose. <laughs> All right, in other news, um, so uh, scientists found, uh, uh, according to BBC News, Science and Environment, they found a distant water world. So Kevin Costner must be pretty pleased. <laughs> um, All the assholes. Yeah. How far away is it? Um, it is 40 light years away. It's oh. uh, it's kind of a super Earth. Wait, only 40 light years? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. genuinely pretty close. Mm hmm It's bigger than our planet, but smaller than the gas giants. Okay. Well, intriguing. So it's like covered... Is it... Do you know uh, if there are, are land masses or if it's just all water? Um, it says it's covered in a thick, steamy atmosphere... Ooh, hot. 
That's, yeah. that's a sexy plan. I'll be right back. I got I gotta go to the bathroom quick. Because we're talking about planets. Oh. When the planets move. When the planets align. I get you. I don't. Okay, so calculations of the planet's density suggest that uh, uh, it has more water than Earth. Uh, that means the internal structure of the world would be very different than Earth's. Uh, temperatures and pressures uh, would form exotic materials like hot ice or superfluid water. Substances <laughs> that are completely alien to our everyday experience, says Dr. Berta. I, I don't even really know what superfluids are. I, th I knew at one point, but yeah. I don't know. So I think what you're saying, though, is that humans couldn't land there, you know, without a suit to protect them. Did you just pee in a Gatorade bottle? Yeah, I'm going to drink it now. Save more. Well, you're like, I'm going to the bathroom. Come back with a bottle full of kind of like a, a urine-colored... I lied about going to the bathroom. I was too embarrassed to tell you I was getting my drink. That's, that's, not that's true. a really weird thing to be embarrassed about. It's not true at all. I just wanted to cause mischief. So superfluidity is a state of matter in which matter behaves like a liquid without viscosity and with extreme high thermal conductivity. Oh, weird. Uh, I'm sure there's more what to that. What would it even be like? Is, that, do, like? is there anything on Earth that would even be It'd be like oobleck that absorbs heat really well. Yeah, oobleck. Just like Ublik, Sean. Okay. Ublikon. Ublik. What is Ublik? You know, that, know. that's just what Shh, like, Alex, don't Alex don't Street School stupid. called that cornstarch mixture that was like a weird oh. viscous thing that absorbed kinetic energy really well. Gotcha. Non-Newtonian fluid. Weird. The things we learned in school. Nothing. <laughs> Zero Ooh, to nothing. the things we learned in school. In other space news... Space news. Space, space news. News. News in space. <laughs> okay, so uh, Japan has plans to build a space elevator. Is in that, Japan? Is, is that another word for Gundam? No, it means space elevator. No, no, but wait. How are they, where are they going to build? They have to build it on the equator. For it no, to work. No, there's room That's to what I've heard, like, too, that they'd have to do that. The, uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Space elevator. Cause, because well, see, the, what I'm imagining in my head is really cool, but I don't think that's what they're building. Are you imagining, like, the glass elevator from the sequel to Charlie and the Chocolate yes. Factory? Boo. See, See, my understanding was one of the important things for a space elevator to be, like, feasible was you had to have actually perfected, like, microcarbon tubes because they'd be extremely <coughs> strong but super light and small. Because if the you make this elevator at equatorial Africa, so the uh, centrifugal force of the Earth keeps it, you know, spinning out and you can actually shuttle things up or down for, like, an incredibly efficient at an incredibly efficient rate, like you don't have to worry about like escaping the Earth's atmosphere by spending hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kilotons of like propellant. Um, but the thing is, if that snaps or breaks and falls down on the Earth, like anything that many you know miles long is going to like cause a lot of destruction if it's not made out of a really strong light material. Well, they'll, they'll just use the same material that they've used on their already created Gundams. I mean, they've got like eight or nine just stationed throughout Japan, so. I'll just use that material. It'll be fine. So the elevator will actually use super strong carbon nanotubes in the cables. What? I didn't think those existed. I thought that was sci-fi. Well, hang on, the, hang on, hang on, man. Let me finish my fucking sentence. Wave the and fifty. 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 Oh. <laughs> the cables would stretch some sixty thousand miles, about a quarter the distance to the moon and would be attached to the Earth at a spaceport anchored to the ocean floor. The other end would dangle a counterweight into space. Yep. The All elevator right. would zip along at 125 miles per hour, possibly powered by magnetic linear motors. 
Uh, would take about a week to get up to the station and carry up to 30 people. Interesting. Well, so, okay. So, so it's it's a pretty big... Uh, it, it would have to be a fairly large elevator then to, for like people to sleep and... Well, the Japanese sleep in drawers, so... <laughs> That's true. That's also true. But I mean, they'll probably just load you up with Red Bull and just be like, nope. You're good at sleeping for a week. <laughs> but a space elevator like that just kind of blows my mind. 2050, though, you said? 2050, they want to get it done. Okay. They okay. said they're going to they're gonna take their time with it, and uh, they're, they're going to move at a snail's pace. Well, they want to see if we all kill each other first. I mean, not yeah. much sense building an elevator without any people to use it. No, you want... an elevator! <laughs> But uh, going they, up while the earth's going down. <laughs> but if, if they actually make such a thing, I mean, uh, yeah, damn, damn, yeah. Be I crazy. can just see that going horribly wrong. Oh just, yeah, just the Hubble crashes into it. Yeah, but first I, week no, it's honestly, up. I just see like the the heading of the news, just like seventy thousand people killed, then collapses onto like a major city, just. Everyone's dead. Does it say? Does it say at all? Like how they're going to do it? Like are they going to have, like, because once they get far enough up, like how are they going to keep building it? Are they going to have? What about this? They'll just keep sending up Japanese men in in like helmets. Just helmets. Yeah, they'll <laughs> like they'll keep climbing. Have at it, boys! Yeah. Oh my god. See, that's the thing is, it won't be like a rigid structure. It'll be almost like an unbreakable rope being held yeah. out by a spinning weight. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's pure centrifugal force. That's mm -hmm. probably why they built the Gundams, though, was to assemble the space elevator. I mean, now, yeah, if you get far enough up, you just... God damn it. I'm just saying. Ah. I've, seen, I've seen them. Look, hey, hey, Alec oh. talked about this before. Hey, what? Hey, what? The Department, of Ag the Department of Agriculture is not responsible for Gundam. It's true. Hey, what? 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 You want to do uh, the Alpha News jingle? Okay. <clears throat> How do jingles? Are you ready? Yeah. What's up in news? Actual elephant edition. Okay. <laughs> I have water for them. <laughs> oh no. So the Huffington Post uh, science. Huffington, it even sounds like an elephant. Huffington would not be an elephant's name. Sure. Wouldn't it? Would. it would be a pretty good elephant's name. Are you kidding me? No, that'd be for a <laughs> like an Englishman that likes cocaine. <laughs> Done. Okay. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> so the Huffington Post is reporting that elephant rampages blamed on old bulls, bad role models for juveniles. Wait, so what? Yeah. So basically, uh, the Huffington Post is alleging that uh, the older elephants who are apparently like the bad eggs are teaching the younger elephants and influencing them to destroy crops. Um, uh, locals wake up to find that their carefully sown tomatoes and onions have been pulled up and their fields mangled with few tracks uh, and some scat <laughs> identifying the elephants as the perpetrators. There's a war coming. I just, I'm just imagining like this, this peaceful village at night, and like the, the, and these elephants like sneak in and like destroy all the stuff, and then sneak out. Nobody knows they're there. They're like ninjas. I like the idea of these hoodie elephants like graffitiing walls and like harassing old men, <laughs> tripping women to like see up their skirts. Like, hey, where you going, pretty lady? Just really, really, just scumbags. <laughs> Uh, so, would you guys be willing to uh, take a personality test? Yeah, I guess. Sure. Let's see if I can find a good one. I got a one. You got a one? Yeah. I don't know. If I got a one. Uh, I don't know if it's a good one, but I got one. 
you have enjoy a wide circle of acquaintances. You feel involved when watching TV soaps. You what? Do this is not a good one. These are weird. I don't... <laughs> Half of these aren't even relevant to me. <laughs> Get a better one. No, no, I think we should do this one. I'm doing it. No, why? I'm doing it. I'm taking this one. Well, if it's if it's really bad, then the results might be kind of interesting, and we can talk about how awful it is. Or surprise right. how surprisingly accurate it is for Alex. The one the one you first the, the one we're still working on here, it's I don't think it was written by an English speaker. I don't even know what this is. It's written by Young, man. He's comment. young at heart. Young at heart. God. So many absolutes. There really should be a maybe or I a know, fuck right? you option. <laughs> fuck you, I'm not answering. A five to one scale? Well, not a five to one. Maybe a four scale. Five to one people can too easily pick the middle. Yeah. Boo boo. That's what I think of you and your five point scale. Do I enjoy having a wide circle of acquaintances? I like how it's acquaintances and not friends. It's like sure I like knowing people but not actually interacting with them outside of knowing them and also also it's vague because does that mean you have to have one to answer yes i I don't know how wide my circle of acquaintance is but i put yes i don't know i don't know oh my god so much pressure Ah. Just, oh, no. just close. Just uh, close your eyes. Just, out, guys. just close pers- your eyes and click. So close my your personality eyes click. depends on the right answer. I really want to win that car. You don't want to get the wrong personality. Once you get a personality from this test, you're stuck with it. Yeah. You, speaking you of which, car. question. I heard car. If you it's yeah, a, if uh, you if you get the exact right personality, you win a car. All right. It's a it's a conversion van though. No, it's a Lamborghini Estrada. I made a chips you, reference. Uh, Hey, speaking of which, Giving number input. 12, you believe the best decision is one that can be easily changed. Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> no. I, ah. Objective criticism is always useful in any activity. It's oh, true. Jesus. It's true. What about therapy? What if, like, you're criticizing a therapist while he's therapizing someone? Well, maybe he's a bad therapist and he needs it. Yeah, well, he needs more practice on the theremin. That's so. not how that works. You tend to be unbiased, what? even if this might endanger your good relationships with people. I put no, even though I do value unbiased, like, yeah, I don't know, man. No, you're, like very, weird. you're very biased. Yeah, oh yeah. I'll, I never want to say say something to upset someone. Yeah, I, I, I don't really care about Sorry that. Sorry about that, guys. No, I actually, I do, if you guys prefer it. I mean, no, I don't, if you don't prefer it. Whatever, I do. whatever you guys want. You prefer to act immediately rather than speculate about various options. In video games, yes. In <laughs> life, I don't actually act on anything. So I'm going to put yes. Oh, I love this question. It's difficult to get you excited. Yes. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> You trust reason rather than feelings. I don't know if that's true, actually. I go with don't my gut a lot. trust but your I, emotions. They can deceive you. I, I don't know. I just tend to think of my own instincts as Carl just being... Does that Carl Sulu? Did you kind of sound like Sulu, didn't it? It did. I just instantly heard George Takei. <laughs> no, son. No, son. <laughs> oh, my... Hey. Does does anybody often think about humankind and its destiny? Yeah, yeah pretty frequently. All the, all the time. Really? Like all the time. Human. It's a pretty. It's a pretty a destiny. That's ridiculous. It it always ends in fire in my envisioning. <laughs> You've got the George R. R. Martin destiny. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's it's never good. <laughs> like, there's never. I've never had a good scenario pan out. The hell kind of a question is this? You easily see the general principle behind specific occurrences. Yeah, that's the one that I did not understand. <laughs> what does that mean? I'm saying no. No, oh, wrong, wrong, wrong answer, Ooh, man. So wrong, man. You're so wrong, man. You spend your leisure time actively socializing with a group of people, attending parties, shopping, etc. 
Ten. Um, why the fuck do they have to make the question so vague? Yeah, I do spend my leisure time socializing with a group of people. You fuckers. But, like, we don't go to parties, and we only shop for, like, video games and, um, you know, bad food that's bad for you. Magic you the Gathering see? is a party, and our d and sessions, <laughs> we're in a party. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, those yeah. are... Frodo never wants to play D anD D because he's a jerk. What? I always want to play D anD D. You uh, know how to put every minute of your stop. time to good purpose. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I, I do, but I don't. <laughs> it's like, what but the point of- is, the point <laughs> is that you know. But Wait, is, is, you know. is feverishly <laughs> masturbating good purpose? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> no, the <laughs> feverish <laughs> makes it no. Oh. Wait, hang on. I'll, I'll, I'll visit yeah. Wikipedia. We'll find out. It'll know. No, no. Go to Wiktionary. Oh my God! It's not the answer. <laughs> Ew. I guess. Justice higher than mercy. Justice higher than mercy. I can't mm-hmm. answer that. I literally can't. Like I can't. I won't be able to submit because there'll be an unanswered question. Well, it you depends. value justice. justice. What do you mean you can't okay. answer it? Just, just click one. But I don't know. You don't. Do like, you or don't you value justice higher than mercy? It's a simple question. I don't know. I like them both. They're both good. Sometimes I just pick and choose one out of a hat. Just That's, like yes. all right. So you're like right, the Supreme Master. Court. Yeah. Cool. Now done. I'm done. Good job, Sonic. Oh, what? Cue the voice. Good job completing the survey, Sean. Oh my god. I hate it. <laughs> it's Sonic just shows up. George the Game. Let's Sonic. go to the Green Hill Zone and do some rings. Let's get fucked up. Often you prefer to read a book than go to a party. I do love books, but I have nothing against parties. It's just I'm kind of lame, so I'd just be in the background anyway. Hmm. I was going to ask you, Andrew, how do you get back there? Like, I, I can't figure out how to get to the background. Like, do you, like, do a special cheat code or something? Because you're always just kind of back there, and it's really cool looking. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, you actually have to, like, double tap down on the, the D-pad, but you have to hit X on the second tap only. Oh, so see, I've been tapping it on both. So there you go. I don't know why that doesn't work. It might be a bug. Okay. All right. I'll try it next time, though. Wait, what? Way to not listen, man. I'm, I'm focusing on this test, <laughs> all right? It's really hard. It is. Um, guys, guys, just pick answers and just and just wrap it up. That's what I did. Oh, no. my God. You're going to fail. Yeah, you're going to have the worst personality. I'm an isfidge. I'm an isfidge. That sounds awful. Hey, all right, all right. Let me let me actually honestly ask your your advice on this question, number forty six. You do your best to complete a task on time. There's plenty of tasks where I don't, but plenty of tasks where I do. Like if it's work or friend related, I generally try to do a task on time. But like school or say family, I don't. <laughs> what, what do I do? Uh, pick the uh, one that your heart tells you to pick. You avoid being heart tells bound to yes. obligations. Then pick yes. Um, right. Yes? You yes. take pleasure putting things in order. No. Yeah. Feel at ease in a crowd. Yes. Easier to be ignored. Good control over your desires and temptations. Shit, yeah. Barely have any. You easily understand new theoretical principles. The process of searching for a solution is more important than the solution itself. Somebody! <laughs> is, uh, Somebody is this quiz that I used being to given know. by a Zen, Zen Master? I don't Zen Master I don't Flex? Know. Zen Master what? Flash? You do your best to complete a task on time. Fuck no. Uh, you take pleasure in gutting, you boy. <laughs> I really wish that was a thing. No, I don't put take pleasure in putting things in order. That is a silly thing. Once we finish this Come test, to- I have a new one for us to take. Oh yeah, is it? It's a good one. Is it which Pokemon are you? 
Nope, it's better. Oh my god, I see vampire quiz. It's a vampire quiz? Nope, what type of vampire would you look... be? Wait, 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 wait. I have a question. What does that even mean? Like, what kind of vampire are you? Like, does it no, choose, how, like, how, Bela Lugosi, how strong of Nosferatu? A vampire Don't be stupid, Andrew. It's how strong of a vampire you are. Come on. What does that even mean? How do they tell? What do you mean? You don't know. Like, are you are you an ancient over 3,000 years old? So bad. How many people have you killed? <laughs> I, I don't even know. Oh, man, this is amazing. <laughs> I'm in... in t- yeah, I was an infidge, so... Uh, let's see. I am slightly expressed introvert, moderately expressed intuitive personality, moderately expressed thinking personality, moderately expressed judging personality. All right, what is everyone? Man, I'm not, I'm not done with my test. We're, you are an integer as well, I-N-T-J. No, I'm an I... Oh, uh, wait, hold on. I'm an I'm I-S-F-J. An I'm an I-S-F-J. Okay, well, okay, so which one are you? I fell under the guardian temperament and the protector subcategory. Okay. Oh, you're a tank. So, I'm a guardian protector. I'm the rational Where? mastermind, apparently. <laughs> raptor mind? No, we, what? I was oh. like, oh my god. He's a <laughs> raptor mind coming from the Cretaceous. It's outrageous. They're from the Jurassic. Yeah, I'm also the, uh, I'm also the mastermind. I am TJ. Yep, rational mastermind. That's mine. Okay. So what do, you, what do you got, Frodo? I'm Who are your an, famous? I'm an people? ISTP. You're an artisan, man. Artesian. Oh my god! I am an artesian. I'm gonna throw up. You're an artisan crafter. All right. Anyone? Uh, oh, I gotta. I'll find a, a better quiz. It's gonna be really good. Really? <laughs> this this ch- yep. can't just be the quiz episode. Well, what it's else? Quiz show. Do? You quiz got other show. things? I've, I've got a. I've got an article that you can read. All right. Because it's right up your alley. I'm Professor Charles Xavier. You're going to be a cripple. You know? Nope. <laughs> You're nope. a horrible pedophile. Uh, I don't... What? It, is that an Ultimates? Because I've told you he was so totally, many times that he Ultimates was totally in love with Jean Grey. And wanted to hop on that Everyone was. Everyone was. Literally all four of the X-Men and, like, everyone, like, it was just horribly written in the 60s. Leave it alone. <laughs> that, that went on, like, um, well into the 70s and 80s. No, it didn't. Yeah, I have a book. I read all of the comics. I have a book where Chuck I- is like, oh, Jean Grey, if only she knew of my love. And it was the 70s, because uh, Mastermind was there. Or not Mastermind, yeah, yeah, yeah. um... Uh, what's his name? Puzzle Quest. <laughs> Puzzle Quest Puzzle was there! This, this is ghost? ridiculous. Isn't that a good article? Yeah, like, I can't even believe that they would do that. It, it's been going on for years, apparently. Just what the hell? Wow, that just blows my mind. Like, it blows my mind that they they are allowed to take that, like, take it that far. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Like, it just seems like it's kind of over the line. Well, it just goes to... Well, re, it, summarize the article, and then we can talk about it. Like, summarize, yeah. it, out, summarize it out loud for everyone? Yes, please. So okay. Oh, stay, just to yourself. Our listeners to yourself. can... Uh... All right. So, uh, Alternet.org reports on a uh, 25-year-old undercover cop one of many who went to several different classes in a few high schools in Florida where they were pretending to be students. And apparently they spent a long time, like this was, I I mean, you can't really call it deep cover, but like weeks just talking with people. And at one point she was flirting with this one student, even though he didn't smoke marijuana after she asked if he smoked, agreed to get her some. She would text him like, like every couple of days and like she tried to give him money for it and he was like no it's a present and like a while later 31 students were arrested including this kid well and like the what i thought was interesting is like the point is, is it? you know how much money did they actually spend you know to get this small amount of marijuana and it's only marijuana it's not anything yeah. else and it's a, it's a school full of kids so it's like they're not even really taking down whoever's supplying this stuff they're just taking down like some of the distribution, I guess, in a small area, you know, in a school. But it's like, 
how much money did that really cost to do that? Because that's ridiculous. Yeah, and they're getting these kids on um, selling within a school zone, which adds an added penalty. It's like to oh, the it's, yeah, it's yeah, severe. right. Jeez. Mandatory minimum two year sentence for in a school zone. So it goes to show you if you're gonna give somebody pot. Just offer it to them for free, and if they're like, "No, man, I gotta pay you for it," just take the pot back. <laughs> just yeah. go, no, you're a cop. It is, it is kind of dumb of the kids to like even you know do anything with it in school, just because like really you're gonna get screwed over if you get caught in any light. You know what I mean? Like, well, so it's like, is it really worth even trying that sort of stuff in yeah. school? Well, you gotta imagine the first kid who is just like you know a young fifteen year old and oh, just yeah. falls in love with this beautiful twenty five year old woman. Right, and she's like, "Hey, do you know where I could get some weed?" And he's like, "Oh, I can totally get you some." And then he's like, "Here, it's it's a gift. You know, you can just have it." She's like, "No, I gotta pay you for it. I, just be cool, man." You're right, exactly. It's, it's just like this kid is love struck, and well, and that's the other thing ridiculous. that's so right, and that's the other thing that's so fucked up about this is like she was f- flirting with him to get him to do this, yeah, and totally playing off of the you know kind of teenage heartthrob kind of a thing where it's just like well how, what else? you're of course you're gonna get a kid you know 16 17 years old to go do that for you if you're gorgeous you know what i mean yeah. what i find it's, to be horrifically stupid is just like that constitutes legal entrapment at least in this kid's case doesn't it no i believe just like asking if she be? could get him some no hmm. no because it's the same way that uh they get johns in prostitution it's like you have to get them to say the yes, specific right. thing. But like even if it was a, a guy, like you can totally see some like nerdy loser who doesn't have any friends and some like cool, you know, senior comes up to you, he's like, Hey, did you go some pot? And just like, Oh man, a friend. I'll get you some nope. pot, man. No friends for you and no uh now jail. No future either. Yeah. So ridiculous. Join the I HIV mean, gang. We all have to yeah. agree. We we have to agree. This is a fantastic use of police resources, oh, and law absolutely. enforcement. It's it's fantastic. It's a great use of all of their money and their, it's, it's such their a people. Blow. It's such a blow to the drug world. I mean, there's oh, I no know. they'll ever recover. We're hitting, we're hitting them where it hurts, man. We're hitting them where it hurts. <laughs> they'll think they'll think what? twice. At least that they will. I was going to ask you, Alex. Did you see uh, on our Frodo's little drawings of us for the podcast picture? Um, you kind of look like Harry Potter. Really? Yes. Good. Yes, you are a wizard, Gary. I'm a what? Where is that art? I want to see it. It's on. It's on the podcast. Just go right on the front of YouTube and find the thing. If you bothered looking at uh, what we create on this, well, I I listened to the podcast. I didn't see any picture though. I tried some new audio editing in the most recent podcast, and it didn't work out too well. Really. I'm actually interested in, um, cause like I'm not very audioly inclined. Okay. So I'm I'm curious if anybody notices a difference in uh, what I do. What's the music that you? I think you've used it in all three of them. It sounds like Mass Effect music. Yeah, it's very close. It's called like, cognitive dissonance. I hear it every time. I'm like I'm playing Mass Effect right now. What the hell? Yeah, it's it's uh it's the opening um, it's our opening theme. Yeah. And then our ending theme is the Sugar Plum Fairy. Yep. I yep. love this picture, Sean. I love this powerful chin that you are rocking. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> I totally look like Harry Potter, too. That's awesome. Oh, by uh, the way, I, love- I was oh. thinking that uh, since we have so many artistically inclined viewers, yeah. if people want to send in uh, pictures, fan art. Yeah, fan, art. fan art that can be used as a background, we oh, will totally... Oh. Put it in. Just base it off the drawings. Do your own stuff. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> something from the podcast. Um, yeah. Animations would be fantastic. Yeah, and, if you want to do a little of... animated video of something we've said that is ridiculous. I didn't realize how dirty our last podcast was. It did get Pre- really dirty. How Although, dirty was let it? me... Let me preface, let me preface, if you, if anyone is going to do an animation, please do not do the puppy love story from last week. Or, or the, oh, yeah. no, the we one from to... last week was fuck, fuck the kids, where you, <laughs> oh, yes. you, Steve and Andrew, just repeating fuck the kids over and over and over again. Who's Steve? I'm pretty sure. Sh- Steve was our guest last week when you oh. were gone. 
in Romania. Who the hell's Steve? Steve Kanicki. Oh, okay. You don't know who that is. <laughs> to be yeah. fair, though, his girlfriend was mostly our guest. It's really? She she just talked and talked. Cheyenne, if you're listening to this one, uh, get yourself a webcam, get yourself a video camera or something, get a YouTube channel, and just talk, because you are a natural talker. Just put it online. She could just talk for hours. And right. she's better than us opinionated, it. yeah. I like that you gave me a scarf, by the way, in that picture. It was. Be- <laughs> you want to know why? Why? Because I screwed up your chin and I used pen. <laughs> I-, I was using pen and I was like, oh crap, I screwed it up. And so I had to fix it somehow. So I that drew a scarf. A good fix. Well, d- he actually gave you a big, gross trach hole and you had to cover it up because it's not <laughs> it that been, accurate. It would have been even greater, though, if you would have given me one of those like anime-style scarves where it's like half of my face is covered with it. <laughs> Damn it. Your D&D <laughs> character had one of those. It's true. Your first one. I, I like to imagine that my assassin has something similar. Because, I mean, okay. you know, he's an assassin. He's got to have a face mask. But you can never leave a room silently enough. No, I will. I will do it. You'll never escape my gaze. I will, and you'll be like, where the fuck is he? I'll be like, ha ha! Oh shit, revealed myself. I'll be doing cartwheels and flips out the door right in front of you, and you'll be like, damn it! I like that your character kind of pouts, and it's just like, oh, I can't do anything! <laughs> Guys, I'm just gonna sit on this rock, you... Ugh. It's just, it was so frustrating, because he's just sitting there, just come at me, bro. Couldn't do shit. <laughs> that was, like, most of the fight, too, which was so embarrassing. Then the bard just takes damage and kind of fails to do any. It was pretty great. By the way, Alex, I'm yeah. Destroya, apparently. Yeah, I am, too. That's that's pretty great. In All your... Right. What the fuck? In your Kiko why are, mind I, test? Why do we keep getting the same, uh, what did you just say, Frodo? In your Kikoman test? Kikoman! You stop it! (laughs) You stop it right now! Why do we keep getting the same answers, though, Andrew? That's weird. You're actually the same person. uh, I've actually just been cheating off you. You're Uh, actually Brad Pitt and Ed Norton. Andrew fucks the way you want to (laughs) fuck. God! (laughs) Somebody please answer. Nobody animate that. Please, nobody. Nobody animate that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> did you guys hear about uh the guy in i can't remember if it was norway or sweden I'm trying to find the article but uh he essentially survived in his car for two months without food yes! or water really oh really yeah, yeah they Just said he two ad- months they they assume he achieved uh a hibernative state wow. because of the exact correct temperature that um he he was in while he was trapped in his Toyota for two months. He was he was yep. in the car, uh, I think, from December nineteenth or sixteenth. He, he was he was too weak to talk when they got him out of the car. Well, yeah, yeah. I'd imagine that's yeah. nuts. He was like fifty. Was months? he really? I didn't read that. I'm surprised he didn't have. Oh, here we go. It was in Sweden. Like he was he was an older gentleman, like not particularly super young. He may have survived by drinking melted snow. Police say they have no huh. reason Almost to doubt. Certain. They have no reason to doubt his story. I just can't believe that that had like two months. That's insane, isn't it? Yeah. Did he lose any like brain function or any sort of motor function, or is he? I think he's still in the hospital. Okay. Yeah, he'll yeah. probably be in the hospital for a while. Yeah. It, it says he'll probably uh, die in the hospital. He's recovering in Umea University Hospital, where staff say he's doing well. Consistences. Hmm. All right. So he's not dead. Damn. He might not die from that, know? though. I mean, it's not impossible. He could no. still survive. He could pull through. No. I, I honestly, it, if he survived that long, he's probably going to have like some adverse effects. But no, I doubt he'll die. Yeah. No. Yeah. He'll definitely have something to um, affect him later on, though. That's for sure. Because that's like something. Ex- I thought you were going to be. He'll definitely have something to remind him of that. <laughs> yeah, remember that, but. I well, like because I mean that's just extreme malnourishment. I mean I can't even imagine how like are there any pictures? The like, car. Oh, just of the car. I was just yeah. curious like how gaunt he must be and stuff. Just because like his body must have just used everything. Well, if he was if he was an American, we'd have pictures. Oh, that's true. Um, I like the the one point where it says 
he may have gone into a kind of hibernation. It just says, said one doctor. I just imagine, like, the doctor, <laughs> like, just walking by the news conference. He probably went into a kind of hibernation. <laughs> Do you even of- work here? No. <laughs> Are you? What kind of doctor are you? I'm not telling. I'm homeopathic. I I restock the medical supplies, guys. Uh, so, uh, should we do uh, your jingle? Uh, do I have a jingle? I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> Let's just do uh, Sean's Pick of the Week. All right, Sean's Pick of the Week. Here we go. I'm Sean. This is my Pick of the Week, musically speaking, of course. Uh, This week, we're going to delve a little deeper, kind of like the dwarves. We're going to go back to 1989. Um, One of my favorite uh, 80s bands, they're Galaxy 500. Um, They're sort of lesser known. Um, And I'm going to go with their sophomore album, On Fire. So this is Galaxy 500, 1989, with the album On Fire. And uh, it's it's my favorite of their albums. They released three. Um, their first one came out a few years prior, and then their third one and final one came out, I think, in the early 90s. But On Fire is my personal favorite. Um, I think it has the best collection of songs. Um, it's sort of... It kind of has that sort of classic, like, 80s college rock sound to it. Um, there's also... There's elements of shoegaze, and there's elements of kind of... There's a lot of reverb. I'm sorry, reverb. But there's a lot of reverb on the lead singer's voice. And they have a really, really distinct sound. The uh, the lead singer, his name is Dean Wareham. Dean Wareheim, I think. And uh, those of you who are really into music, um, after uh, Galaxy 500 dissolved, he went on to be in the band Luna. They were actually a pretty successful indie band in the 90s. Um, and sort of, they sort of retained the uh, the sound from Galaxy, but yeah, um, Galaxy Five Hundred. They they were very succinct. Their songs uh, they sort of have a drone quality to them. Like they get into this melody. Like there's the drums and the guitar comes in, and then it's sort of like a jam session almost. Like they jam for several minutes in their songs. There's a lot of really cool. In- if you're really listening for it, there's some great instrumentation. Um, All right. And uh, the song Strange is probably their biggest hit. I know it's been used in a few films. You may have heard it if you listen to it, but that was sort of the, like their one. They were not a singles band at all. They didn't have many hits, but the song Strange was one of their hits. Um, that one's from On Fire. Um, also the song Blue Thunder, which uh, makes pretty great use of some saxophone. They didn't use saxophone a lot, but like there's, there's some pretty great sax playing going on there. Nice. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, I absolutely love this band. Um, more people should should be aware of them. More people should listen to them. And that's Galaxy spelled G L. I'm sorry, G A L A X I E five hundred. But uh, so yeah, my music pick of the week, Galaxy five hundred, coming at you from 1989 with On Fire. And if you listen to them, like them, uh, check out the band Luna and also a lot of Dean Wareham's, I'm sorry, I can't say his name, Dean Wareham, Wareham, Wareheim, whatever. <laughs> He's got solo stuff too, so check out all of his music because they're great. Um, yeah. All right, Sean, thanks. Dean you later. <laughs> that guy won an Oscar. I'm so happy. Jim Rash won an Oscar. I love it. <laughs> he deserved it, man. It was a good movie. It was. Descendants. I- I only hope that on the second half of uh, this season of Community, they somehow reference him winning an Oscar. Like, there's maybe an Oscar on his desk or on his shelf. That would be amazing. <laughs> they have to. <laughs> Especially, uh, that show better not get canceled. Only time will tell, but NBC does suck. It's true. All right, thanks, Sean. No problem. But uh, with that, I think I'm going to head out and have myself asleep. Wait, aren't, aren't we going to do the What Pokemon Are You quiz? Nope, nope, nope. nope. We've, no one <laughs> needs to know what Pokemon we are. No one. Andrew's I'm, wiggly. I'm tough. pretty sure we... <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> okay. This has been Jelly Side Out. Uh, this Jelly Side <laughs> Out. <laughs> this is Jelly Side Out. This is some. Yellow with the jello sides down and upside around. Please like a been jelly sat down. Okay. Uh, thanks for listening. Okay, we're we're this Bye. is this has been jelly side. Hey, see you guys. Like,
Thanks. Bye. Good night. Oh, you can use that big hands bill yeah. image. Love I you. Have. <laughs> Good night. That was awful. Sleep tight. That was a bumblefuck of awful.